Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storms and Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Denver, Colorado. Now, if you are using containers or if you consider using containers, you probably came across Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of these large open source projects that allows you to better manage and sort of orchestrate container workloads. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation spent some money last year trying to figure out how secure this particular environment is is they hired two security company trails of bits and treaties partners to do a fairly extensive security audit of this particular system. Now, since Kubernetes is really not just sort of one piece of software as such, but really an ecosystem, they did pick a few of the key components of it to do this security audit. And uh, well, uh, with some pretty good results, nothing really that I would call um, sort of outrageously insecure, but they found a total of 37 vulnerabilities, at least that's from the Trails of Bits. Uh, report where five of them they considered high severity issues where for example authentication tokens were locked in clear text files if you are using kubernetes you definitely should take a look at the reports and now uh, the report also does include uh, essentially a hardening guide and a guide for pen testers that are investigating Kubernetes installs. So that itself is probably almost more valuable to end users of Kubernetes than the actual uh, security review report of Kubernetes. Now, the report was finished a couple months ago and the report was first, of course, presented to the Kubernetes team. So they were able to address the vulnerabilities that were pointed out in this report. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation, on the other hand, and sees this uh, as sort of you know one major project and they are planning on conducting similar reviews for other projects and Apple today announced a significant expansion of its bug bounty program. In the past, bug bounties were only available for iOS and only to selected security researchers that first had to be approved by Apple. This expanded bug bounty program now covers all of Apple's operating systems and is open to all security researchers. In addition, Apple will make available to who selected security researchers unlocked models of the iPhone in order to allow them to easier review the code and look for vulnerabilities. And I don't know if other security vendors do the same thing, but Apple also provides a significant bonus of up to 50% to bugs reported in pre-release software. Of course, this makes a lot of sense if vulnerabilities can be fixed before the software is actually released to the public. And Vasily Kravitz published an interesting blog post with a zero-day privilege escalation vulnerability in the Steam online gaming client. Now, usually privilege escalation vulnerabilities are not really all that terribly interesting. What makes this more interesting is how trivial it is to exploit. And also that you know, Steam is a fairly popular client that's installed on many user systems. The problem here is that Steam has a system service that can be started by any user. The system service then starts additional software. Now, of course, the first thing to try here is uh, if uh, the normal user can change any registry keys that will affect which software is started that part didn't work but what however happened was that the service did change permissions for any sub keys within the registry 
It made all of those subkeys user changeable. So what Vasily was able to do was to create symlinks from existing registry keys to subkeys within this Steam registry key set. And that way he was able to have this system service change the permissions on these keys. And then of course he was able to change the registry keys that only a system user administrator is supposed to change. And he was able to run arbitrary software as administrator. Pretty clever trick here, how this was exploited. And like I said, now all it really takes is a registry editor in order to accomplish the exploit. And security company ESET came across an interesting piece of malware related to some of the sextortion scams that uh, we have reported about plenty in the last couple years. The special part about this particular software is that while it's a spam bot and it's heavily targeting French users apparently, in addition to sending spam, which includes sextortion emails, this particular bot also has the ability to turn on the camera, record the user while the user visits specific pornographic websites. So in essence, this particular malware would be able to actually pull off this trick that these sextortion scams always warn about. But even though it has the ability, apparently it's actually not taking advantage of it. As far as ESET was able to tell, apparently you don't really need any evidence. It's just easier to send the email without actually doing any recording. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.